Okay, I'm gonna finish this um, this uh, highlight, this video highlight, and I'm starting on the one. Here we go. That's so cool. It's an ASCII after after my own heart. Okay, so here's how we're continuing the code sash, except we've been interrupted by the discovery of a uh, the discovery of an Easter egg in uh, in the YouTube dashboard, YouTube live streaming dashboard source code. <laughs> and there it is, somewhere around 9167, I think it was. Yeah, 9160, somewhere around. It's exactly 9167, of course. Uh, but, but, uh, so we got to take a screenshot now. This isn't the kind of thing I usually do on this show, but this is like too good to resist. So, let's get a screenshot here. Okay, that's funny. So there's an um, Easter egg. So to find this Easter egg, go to a youtube.com slash live dashboard, where you've got your live streaming dashboard. Um, streaming dashboard Easter egg. And, uh, and open up the source, and you'll find around line 9167. Um, that there's an Easter egg there. It's pretty funny. I mean, it's not an egg. It's a picture of who is that? One of the Marx Brothers? A vampire? I think it might be a vampire. And now you get to watch me post it to Twitter. No, okay, I'm going to take that off the highlight. Anyways, that's funny. You guys should check out the uh, the Easter egg over there. It's pretty hilarious. And I'm back to the code sesh. Funny. Funny, funny, funny. Why was I in here? Um, oh, yes. So, when you're looking at the live dashboard, um, know that these are API calls, right? So, I mean, must be 90% of them, not all of them. Some of them could be backend stuff that we don't have access to. I mean, but we do have access to it because look, I'm running it right now. Um, so, I mean, I look down here and I see that I can change the category. I see that I can change the, you know, uh, privacy settings and uh, other stuff. I see that I can insert and delete messages. I, you know, I assume somewhere in, somewhere buried in this labyrinth is the capability for my programs to do that as well. And uh, most of the time, you know, you're right about it. So, anyways, that's what I do. Um, so, I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at this highlight feature, right? So, and, and I, I said there's a real storm, by the way, here in the real world. Which is funny, because... Drone Sound TV is also playing a storm in the background. Get some music up again. I think we're about to hear the melancholy tape. Pretty cool. Uh, I've been listening to it recently. Check them out on SoundCloud.com at um, yeah, melon melancholy tapes. Except it's spelled like melon, you know, like um, you know watermelon or whatever. M e l o n C H O L Y hyphen uh, tapes, T A P E S. Check them out on SoundCloud.com. We're hearing a Melancholy Beats tape number one. That's pretty cool. Anyways, back to this. I'm looking at the live dashboard. I'm seeing this create highlight, highlight thing, which you've seen me using tonight plenty. And, uh, and I'm thinking, like, how, how can I get at that? How can I create a highlight? There are these. There are these slate requests, and you give it a time. 
an offset time. I don't think that's it. This transition, I mean, is that what's happening? You know, it says that this is where you change your your status from like testing to, to live or whatever, but maybe there's like some secret, you know, YouTube stops transmitting the video. This is if you set your broadcast status to complete. I really want to make a tiny, um, a, tr a tiny um, highlight. They call it a highlight. That means a, a piece of your live stream. So like you just say start now and end now. Definitely no, you know, like get preview or get highlight or something like that. That'd be nice. I don't just want it for this kind of kludge, um, you know, thing of, of replacing the thumbnail. Um, I also want it for another reason. I want I want shoutouts to be like a whole video. I want it to make a like a video with you know, 3D stuff, maybe like explosions or something, you know. And, and it, to actually cut a video for you and, and say, hey, here's your video that I made for you. You remember those machines that used to make um, little plastic, little uh, wax dolls out of uh, injection mold? There'd be like an injection mold of a gorilla or something like that. And you put a quarter in there and it would, it would like injection mold this. That, that's what I'm thinking, something like that. Like you come in here and you say shout out and it, and it gives you like, a, you know, a 60 second video or something, maybe a 30 second video and cranks it out for you like the like the wax figure machine. So think about that for a minute and uh, I'm going to get some more coffee. I'm all, all out and dry now too. I think I'm going to stick a pen in this. Usually what I do is I start an idea like this and kind of like explore and figure out <clears throat> what the obstacles are going to be. And, and I'll like I'll sleep on it for a day or something, and I'll come back. I'll get a new idea about it, and come back and try something new at it. And you know, eventually I'll come up with a model that works, and then that's when I'll actually sit down and write a proper program for it. This this I think is going to require a little more exploration, um, you know, before I can do it the way I want it to work. It should just be totally automated, and I want it to be an image from the stream, like right now even though, you know, mine's not like a person on there or anything. I want it to reflect what's happening on the, on the stream and uh, not just be like from a collection of, of, you know, images or something that would hardly be worth doing. Uh, one thing I was thinking about doing is changing the description um, in response to the chat. I remind you again, we're listening to uh, Melancholy Tapes, and you'll find them at soundcloud.com slash melancholy tapes. It's just like it sounds, except um, the melon is spelled like watermelon, so it's M-E-L-O-N-C-H-O-L-Y, and a hyphen, and then the word tapes. Uh, you can find them on soundcloud.com, they're pretty cool. We're listening to Melancholy Beats 1 tape. So, um, so I was saying, I can update the description in response to the chat and I'll remind you that Drone Sound TV is, I mean it is, it's my personal art project but it's not really so much about Drone Sound TV. The book, the bot is not about Drone Sound TV, the bot is a, is a bot for YouTube and for Twitch and for Facebook eventually um, aimed at live streamers and 24 uh, 7 channel streamers. Um, so, Drone Sound TV is really the proving grounds for Stagecoast, the bot, right? So, even though I might not, as a, how many subs do I have now anyways? Not enough, but, but, uh, well, plenty, actually. Thank you, subs, by the way. Wow, 182 subs for Drone Sound TV, for an automated 
live stream. But uh, the point of these features isn't so much for like what I do with them, it's like what other people would do with them. So I'm, I'm like, you know, adding in capabilities that even though I would hardly use them, um, that other people might, you know, would get use out of, would get a lot of value out of. And I think it's really funny. It's it's really interesting. I mean, of them, among the things that you cannot change once the live stream has started, it's a, it's a big list. The list of things you can't change is a big list, right? And uh, so some of these features overcome some of those things or augment those things or just bypass those things, like uh, these notes, right? This note feature, um, you know, allows users from the chat to add something to the screen. And that's actually the basic model of the whole thing. It's really the, the main revolutionary model here is that users in the chat add things to the screen or manipulate the screen or the sounds. The problem is a lot of these things you can't change um, dynamically, right? Some of them. Um, although and for the bot, for Stagecoast, for the bot behind Drone Sound TV, that list is getting really small. It's turning almost everything you can change now. Um, but one of the cool things is that the description and the title, and this is new by the way, this only changed like maybe three weeks ago. The description and the title, um, they do change. They change when you change them. Uh, that's just, that's amazing to me. I mean, I know it's, you know, it's just a, a, a poll, you know, like a polling thing, is in it, which is cool. So thank you, YouTube. My God, thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, the things I'm going to do with that, you've already seen what I'm doing with it. So the title of the stream now says, Wednesday, 2.52 a.m., now playing Melancholy Tapes. I, I didn't change that. The bot changed it, right? So the program that, um, that plays music, you know, it also updated the title to reflect what was currently playing. And um, so that's really the real use of this. I mean, I suppose your moderators and your really popular channels might handle your titles for you, and that'd be cool. Also, when I run a live stream, it's way more convenient, since I already have the chat open on my mobile device, to change the, change the title of the live stream from chat. So that's a great convenience for me. And I know it is for other users uh, as well. But mostly this is about providing the underlying capabilities so that users can go, oh, I can tie, you know, the title thing to the random fortune thing to something else. You get what I'm saying? So, like maybe when you're, you know, when your elite users come back to your channel, you can change the channel and say, you know, welcoming back, you know, so-and-so. And that's pretty cool, right? And it changes, like, now. It doesn't change in the browser title bar because it can't, right? But it does change in the content of the page. That that means the title on the page, which is freaking cool. And I, oh, are you sitting down? Are you sitting down? You should be sitting down because. And this applies to the description field too, which is huge. The description field is uh, ten thousand characters. Yeah, it's ten thousand characters. Yeah, yeah, it's ten thousand characters. I remember that number because when I read it in the API, I was like, 10,000? What the hell kind of dude, what the hell kind of number is that? Everything's a power of two in computers. <laughs> Who gets the number off at 10,000? It doesn't add up like easily to anything, isn't it even on a bit boundary? So, anyways. Um, it's 10,000 characters, which means you can do a lot in here, okay? A lot. A lot. <laughs> so like, other channels have music, right? And they have a bot, Nightbot usually, which has the SR command, song request command, which is great. I mean, all respect to Nightbot, but I think it's a bit anemic. And one of the things about it is that in these channels where they play music, um, they say, well, if you want to see a list of all of the tracks that are available, you have to go to this page, so they send it to a page, right? And I, this page looks pretty, definitely manually updated. Um, but even if it's not, it's it's not in the interface, right? Yeah, you got me. I I can put it in here. I can put the list in the description field, and you don't have to go anywhere 
and you don't have to refresh. It will just update. So, I thought, I have a command where, oh, are they called tracks? Yeah, tracks. Two bucks, maybe. Yeah, two bucks or tracks. And, uh, and it will list out all the currently available onboard pre-approved tracks in the description field. And you won't have to go anywhere. And it'll stay there for, I don't know, a couple minutes and then refer to whatever the description had been before that. This is definitely a way pushing the envelope. Trust me, no other bot does anything like this, not even remotely. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting this out. I got, I got, I got like two schools of thought going right now about this. Yeah, some people I think I should just turn it into a server app and just, you know, enter the market head on, you know, straight up. And I don't know about that. I hate supporting things. I like to get, I already have new ideas I want to move on to, right? So I want to make this thing as great as I can and then make it extensible and easy to um, work with and for me and for other people. And then I want to continue on to the other things. I got genetic algorithm stuff to do. So. And uh, also I have another idea for another internet internet service type thing, kind of like this. But anyways, I'm trying to get it to that uh, place. It's not, that's quite a ways off. I still got to get to the initial release first. But uh, again, if you didn't track it earlier, I was saying that you at least could, if you, if you like, you could now feel free to browse the code. <laughs> I don't recommend you run any of it yet at uh, uh, GitHub.com slash DieMasterMonkey. There you'll find the project Stage Ghost, the proper name for the bot behind Drone Sound TV. And many disclaimers saying this is not ready. If I haven't said it enough yet, this is not ready for public for public consumption yet, because it doesn't have error checking mostly. I mean, it's assumed everything is set up right in many places, and uh, so. And there there are some features you you won't be able to implement. For example. Um, free sound, I can't give you the drone sound stuff, the sound effects background, um, unless you have your own free sound ID or free sound um, account. So you'll have to get a free sound uh, API key, and that I can't help you with. Um, but the code is there, so you, once you get that, you can run your own drone sound TV type background sound effects thing, however you like. Um, there are some there's some themes in there. They, they work. They're the production themes from the channel. So you can see how those work and what those capabilities are, as well as uh, all of the production commands are in there that you use from the chat. So you can see how those are implemented, which is extremely easy to do. So that's really the whole point. It's not about the commands that, like, here's the thing. So you want to evaluate this bot. You're a skeptic, as I am, and you should be too. <laughs> um, and you come in here and you're like, uh, this thing probably sucks. And you type commands and you get a list of like, the, I don't know what there is, like 14 commands or whatever. I don't know. It depends on what's in the commands directory. And you'd be like, that's it? This this bot sucks. Uh, which this bot may suck, but if you're judging it by that, then you're making a grievous error, my friend. Uh, because this is just a listing of the commands that are in the commands directory. Any number of commands can be added to the commands directory. For work. Furthermore, they can be added from the chat. I know, it's insane. I know. And that stuff's not documented yet. Oh my god, it kind of is documented. <laughs> now that I think of it, it kind of is documented. All this stuff's locked down anyways. Okay. Oh, maybe I'll unlike to link Anyways, you can go there and browse through the code, and you'll see how things are, and uh, how things work. And you know what? I think that might be it for this code sesh. You know, the weird. I didn't write any code. I know. If you, if this was your first uh, code sesh for 
for me, Die Master Monkey, also known as Gary D, also known as the man with way too many pseudonyms. If this was your first code sesh with me, then and, and you're feeling you're feeling cheated, go check out my other code seshes in the uh, watchable code sections of Drone Sound TV. Again, that's youtube.com slash drone sound TV in case this made its way elsewhere. Um, there's also some other plenty of other code stuff. Um, at hackaday.io slash monkey and youtube.com slash diemastermonkey. I don't know why my content spread out all over the place. and uh, But it makes it fun because you get to hunt for it. So if you have been watching, thanks for tuning in to the show 